local market is set for a positive start at this stage. And for all the latest and what we can expect, Sky News business reporter Ingrid Willinge joins us now live from the ASX. Ingrid. Hi, Liz. Yeah, we've seen a bit of a breakdown in the usual global correlations overnight with the US and the European markets closing up, despite a bit of negative news out of those areas. In the Eurozone, we saw Spanish bond yields um, rising um, to a Euro-era record high. And then in the US, we obviously saw, you know, negative, a raft of negative data, including housing, labour and manufacturing data there. But this is for two major reasons. And the first is, um, you know, Ben Bernanke and the hopes for more stimulus, where we tend to see in the US negative data markets tend to rally because of this hope for stimulus, but also corporate earnings season in the US holding up markets with the tech space really leading the pack in the US overnight. IBM and Qualcomm, two major tech players in the US, uh, both beating expectations with their earnings. So let's see if we can maintain this risk on rally today in our local market. The SPY has been trading with modest gains this morning, but um, let's check in with Julia Lee from Bell Direct. She joins me now at the ASX. Julia, thanks for coming down. So what are, are you expecting this risk on rally to kind of last into our session today? Well, yesterday it was such a strong performance by the Australian market, a gain of 2%. We saw a volume spike and we broke an important resistance level at 4,175 points as well. So today we're really looking just to maintain that gain. So as long as we stay above 4,175 points, which should be relatively easy easy, and we, we are relatively steady, I think most people are going to be happy with a performance like that. Yesterday it was really the energy sector which outperformed and overnight oil prices were a big story as well. We saw Brent crude up around about that 2% level and the WTI, the West Texas Intermediate Contracts, up around about 3%. So it could be that the energy sector is once again quite well supported. TEN's also going to be watched very closely. The AFI, it had an article that it's uh, looking to sell its uh, I outdoor advertising unit to Champ Private Equity for about $130 to $150 million. I think the market's going to be quite happy with prices around that in that range so altogether hopefully we'll be uh, holding on to the gains from yesterday and all up it looks like it's going to be a pretty good week for the Australian market. Yeah but what did you make of the session um, throughout the week because you know obviously we saw BHP numbers come in and, and markets fell that day and then obviously the next day energy stocks held the market up so what, what did you make of the week? Overall, it's been a fantastic week. We've seen a gain of 3.1% for the week so far. But if we have a look at it sector by sector, it tells a very different story. The best sector by far was the energy sector, and that was helped along by Woodside Petroleum and Santos's production reports out yesterday. But if you take energy out of the equation and then have a look at the other sectors, the good news is that we saw all sectors trading higher. But I guess the more cautious uh, the more cautious side of things is that the areas which outperform were once again those high yielding areas. So investors are still looking for yield. Outside of the energy sector, it was the consumer staples and the utility sectors which outperformed. And I guess one of the things to watch on the market is the upcoming dividend paying season in August and September, where we see so many companies coming out to pay dividends. So in August, we'll see companies like Cochlear, uh, like West Farmers, uh, Westfield, Telstra, CBA coming out to pay uh, their dividends. So it is likely that uh, up until August we'll see these high yielding stocks still relatively well supported. On the downside though we saw the material sector once again the worst area. It still grew by 2% but I think a bit of cautiousness still around growth in China and um, of course that's still sector so that really didn't help BHP and Rio Tinto too much. So with all this volatility, how would you be positioning your portfolio as an investor? It's a good question at the moment because over the last couple of years, it's really been those defensive areas like telecom utilities which have outperformed. But I think those, uh, those defensive type stocks are starting to look fully valued now. And I think it's time to start thinking about cycling into some of the more growth and high beta areas. It's not an aggressive move, but it's time to slowly start thinking about moving into those areas because they do look like there's uh, a lot more deep value there. But if we have a look at what's driving the market, of course, the macro factors are still important. And you mentioned that the Spanish 10-year bond yields once again spiked above 7%. So while we are seeing a lot more optimism on the market this week, I think investors still have to be a bit cautious and aware of the macro events which are dominating um, a lot of what's happening in the developed world. Yeah, and we've seen um, corporate earnings season in the US and Europe obviously being quite positive. Are we going to be as lucky as, as Europe and the US and see ours as positive when it starts in the next couple of weeks? 
Oh, well, we, we hope so. But I guess uh, one thing we hear time and time again on the Australian market is that Australian stocks are such great value. But in fact, if you have a look at earnings expectations, you understand why so many sectors have been uh, underperforming. For FY12, the expectation is that earnings will only grow by 0.4%. So looking at a quite flat result, and that's a consensus, if you exclude out the resources and expecting growth of 4.1%, breaking it down sector by sector, the reason why the material sector has been the worst performing over the past year is because FY12 earnings in that area is expected to fall by 13%. On the flip side, energy is likely to be a highlight. Consensus is for growth of 22% in earnings uh, for FY12 in that area. But telecom is expected to grow by 10%. So no wonder that we are seeing the likes of Telstra performing so well. Um, the banks are expected to grow about 2.5%. I think one of the areas to watch this earnings season is going to be the insurers. They're expected to grow about, by about 32% in FY12. One thing to be cautious about this earnings season is uh, the current financial year, FY13, and expectations for growth in FY13 are still double digits, 11.5% is a consensus, and we might see that come down a touch, so that's one thing for investors to be aware of. All right, thanks so much, Julie Lee from Bell Direct.